And then now coming to the names of Surah Fatiha, almost uh, 25 names of Surah Fatiha have been mentioned. I'll be talking about the most important names. The first name, which is the most commonly uh, known name is Al-Fatiha. The root word of Fatiha is Fataha, and it means to start, to open, to imitate, to initiate, and to commence something. So according to the name, it means that Surah Fatiha, it opens the book of Quran. It, it starts the message of the book of Allah. And this not only starts or not only is the opening of Quran, we would also realize that Surah Fatiha starts our Salah. In our Salah, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing we recite in our Qayyam is Surah Fatiha. And it is also advised by the Prophet ﷺ to start our supplications and dua with Surah Fatiha for their acceptance. So it is very truly called Al-Fatiha. The second name is Surah As-Salah. It is known as Surah As-Salah because the start of Salah is with Surah Al-Fatiha. And moreover, it is mandatory, it is obligatory to recite Surah Fatiha for all people offering Salah. And if Surah Fatiha is not recited in, uh, in the Salah, the Salah will not be complete. Hazrat Abadah bin Samit was ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la salata, there is no salah, there is no prayer. For whom? La salata liman yaqra'a, liman, uh, liman lam yaqra'a bi Fatiha bil kitab. There is no prayer, there is no salah for one who does not recite the Surah Fatiha in his salah. So from this hadith, we need to gather a thing and we need to remember that may it be our personal salah or may it be our congregational salah. It is obligatory to recite Surah Fatiha. Because you know, when we are, uh, we are offering salah in congregation and the Imam recites a surah after Surah Fatiha, we might not have uh, the hips of that surah and we might not be able to recite it. So fine, we might just keep on listening what the Imam says. But as far as Surah Fatiha is concerned, all people who are offering the prayer behind the Imam, they are supposed to recite Surah Fatiha themselves. Because without Surah Fatiha, the Salah will not be complete. The third name is Surah ad dua and it is known as Surah ad dua because of two main reasons. The first reason is that uh, Surah Fatiha teaches us the manner and the ethics of dua. And it teaches us and educates about the style of dua we need to adopt to ensure that the dua will be accepted. The manner of making dua which we gather from Surah Fatiha is by looking at the arrangement of verses in Surah Fatiha. And uh, we uh, can see that first of all, in the verse number two, three, and four, the second, third, and the fourth verses, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin. So in the second, third, and fourth verse, uh, we learn to praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after this, in the fifth verse, this is a promise, it is a pact of the bondsman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And third and the final, in the verse number six and seven, finally is the dua. So if we gather if you gather about the mannerism, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us about dua is, and if we realize that right at the start of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the manner of one of his greatest gifts, that is dua. 
and that is the gift of supplication. And he is teaching us the manner of dua. So what we gather about the mannerism and ethics of dua is that before asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a matter of respect and regard, we start our dua with praise and glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first thing. That is why, because the surah teaches us the mannerism of dua, that is why it is known as surah ad dua The second reason why it is called surah dua is that what I narrated a hadith just uh, now, we, uh, Prophet Sallallahu has clearly told us that whenever before a supplication surah Fatiha is recited, then the dua will be heard. It will be answered, it will be accepted, and the dua of the supplication will be granted. The doors of heaven will open for the dua, which is preceded by Surah Fatiha, and the dua will reach the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal when Surah Fatiha is recited prior to the dua. So that is why it is known as Surah Ad Dua. The fourth name is. Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book that is Quran. Mother, we know, has a pivot role in the house, and she is the most important figure in the family. And she is also the most vital and the dearest member of the family. So likewise is the importance and the merit and the role of Surah Fatiha in the Quran, in our Salah, in our Dua, and in our lives. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has who he narrates in Tirmidhi that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, <coughs> the chapter commencing with Alhamdulillahi Wabbil Alameen is Ummul Quran is the mother of Quran, the mother of the book, and the seven repeated verses and the great Quran. So this is this is another name. And now the fifth name is Sab Amin al Masani. This name has been indicated in Quran itself in Surah Hijr, verse number eighty-seven. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walakad atainaka sab amin al Musani wal Quran al Azim." That there is uh, no doubt that we have we have gifted you with seven verses which are repeatedly recited. And then on the other hand, we've also gifted you with the greatest Quran. So here, um, Surah Fatiha is been called as Sabam Min Al Masani, that is the seven verses which are repeatedly recited. Now, uh, when the Prophet was asked by the companions that what does Sabam Min Al Masani refer to, then Prophet said, By Allah, it means Surah Al Hamd and Surah Al Fatiha. And similarly, we've also seen in the previous uh, hadith, as relate, uh, narrated by Hazrat Abu Sahad and Musa Ahmad, that Prophet said that the seven repeated verses of Quran are what? Surah Al Hamd. And why is it known as Sabam Min Al Masani, the seven repeated verses of Quran? Because they are repeated so many times. Every, every rakat of every salah, the starting of every rakat of every salah, we start, we repeat what? We repeat Surah Fatiha. And if you make a calculation of all the farad namaz and the muakada sunnah, which we offer during a day, a minimum of about like 31 times are we just repeating these seven verses in our salah. And then uh, we, uh, we recite surah salah or surah fatiha before the dua. And so these are the verses which are repeated many times. And from this, uh, from these words, from this verse of uh, the Quran, and from these uh, words of these ahadis, that they are the seven verses, we understand another thing that Surah Fatiha has seven verses. Then, according to this, it means that Surah Fatiha has seven verses. Now, if you start counting the verses from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen till Dualin, there would be six verses. So, it means what? 
it implies that Bismillah rahman rahim is an essential part of Surah Fatiha, and this is included as a verse of Surah Fatiha. So why am I mentioning this is that when we recite Surah Fatiha in our Salah, we need to recite Bismillah rahman rahim before it, because if Surah Fatiha is recited without Bismillah, then Surah Fatiha will not be complete because as I've just said, Bismillah rahman rahim is an essential and integral part of Surah Fatiha. And if Bismillah is not recited, then recitation of Surah Fatiha will not be complete. And if Surah Fatiha is not complete, then as we just heard the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La Salata Illa Bi Fatiha, that the Salah will not be complete. So we need to recite Bismillah rahman rahim before Surah Fatiha. But now, many of you uh, might tend to disagree with me and you may say that in the mosque when we offer our prayers, the Imam, we've never heard the Imam recite Bismillah. And even the imam Haram, he doesn't even start with the Bismillah rahman rahim So how do we relate this? You know, we learn from a hadith in Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu manner was that when he used to uh, recite Surah Fatiha, he used to recite Bismillah rahman rahim in his heart. And then he used to start with the recitation of Surah Fatiha loud from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So all the Imams who are leading the Salah, they follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so, uh, the Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the Tasmiyah is recited in heart and it is not recited loudly. And the recitation of Surah Fatiha in a loud voice is started from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And from this Hadith also, we realize another thing, the importance of Surah Fatiha that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is saying what? He is mentioning the blessings of Allah to Prophet sallallahu and mentioning the blessings Allah is saying that on one side, on one hand is Al-Quran Al-Azim and on the other hand is Sabah Masani. So this indicates and this highlights how important and how vital Surah Fatiha is, and this highlights the excellence of Surah Fatiha. Then another name is Asasul Quran, the actual and the most important triable portion of Quran is the Asasul Quran. And uh, then another name is Surah Ruqayya. Ruqayya means to recite some verses that is in form of incantation, recite some verses to remove or uh, to save from any illness or evil deed or magic or the effects of control of jinn. So this surah is used for rukya and for incantation and that is why it is known as surah rukya. And the eighth name is uh, surah ash-shifa. Shifa is because it is proven to be recited, to remove, and to cure for illness or for shifa. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates. And before that, I would want to uh, explain, narrate the words of Prophet Sallallahu that Prophet said, the opening of the book, that is Al-Fatiha, is a cure to every poison. And then Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates uh, his occasion in Bukhari. He uh, explains that they were on a journey and they stopped over at a place where there was a tribe of unknown people and a girl, um, they came, a girl came up to them and she informed them that the chief of the tribe, he had been stung by a scorpion. And uh, she said that uh, the men of the tribe were not there. And she requested the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu to recite something upon the chief to treat him. So one of the companions went over to treat the chief and he uh, recited something upon him and the chief was cured. And uh, the chief was so happy that he gave 30 sheep and he gave them milk to drink. And when the companion came back, the rest of the companions asked, did you, uh, did you know anything to recite upon him to cure? 
And he said, no, I only recited Umul Kitab, that is Surah Fatiha. And uh, when they came back, they explained the whole equation to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him that was it uh, correct to take the reward? And Prophet ﷺ said, distribute your reward amongst yourself. So that it was made permissible. And uh, he, this also proves that Surah Fatiha can be used for incantation and it can be used for the purposes of uh, curing and for uh, the remedy of illnesses.